Well, hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On our YouTube channel, we talk about all things homesteading and try to implement some of those things on our rural 100 acres here in Southern West Virginia. Well, in today's video, I wanna answer a viewer question, and I thought this was a really good question, so I wanted to get it in as a video. The question comes from Bayer Forestry Welding and Other Stuff, is the name of his channel. And he says, what tractor should I get to start a homestead when I don't have much money and can't borrow the money for a new tractor? Well, this is a great question. When I, when I read this question, I immediately had an answer, but I thought, well, I need to, I, I don't want to just respond and say this, but um, I needed to do a little research and just make sure it wasn't completely my bias and I'd be totally unfounded in my choice there. So here's what I've come up with. Well, the obvious issue of wanting a tractor and not having any money, you know, those kind of rub against one another. They don't, they don't work too well. So obviously I'm, I'm not gonna propose something that's um, totally unfounded and, and wow, here's a, here's a way to get a free tractor. I'm not going that direction. But before I answer this question, I would like to, to have everyone think of that's in the same situation, what exactly do you need a tractor for? Are you in a position where you're like, well, I've got a homestead or I'm starting a homestead Everybody seems to have a tractor. I think I need a tractor. Now, you know, obviously, you, uh, you should put more thought into it if you're at that point. But really identify what you want to use a tractor for. Are you, A, going to plow? Are you going to have a large tract of land that you're going to garden and thus need to plow and disc and till and all those type of things? Then the tractor would be useful there. Are you going to put up acres and acres of hay? If that's the case, then yeah, you probably need a tractor. Although if you're putting up acres and acres of hay, you're probably not just starting out with a homestead. Are you going to do earthworks? Do you have to move a lot of things around? Uh, you know, dirt here, that move those type of things. Or do you need to do a lot of mowing with it? Do you have to um, you know, have some fields cut, uh, run, some, uh, run a brush hog over some uh, overgrown areas? Or do you just need to move a lot of things around? Just just have a vehicle like you use your tractor like you'd use a four-wheeler or a side-by-side -side or, or an old farm use truck. So kind of identify those things. I'd go down the checklist and say, you know, what do I really think I need this tractor for? Because that's really going to depend where you go. But with that being said, I do want to answer this question. And my thought is, if you don't have a lot of money, but you know you want a tractor and you got to start somewhere, my choice would be, the Ford 8N. All right, now I know some of you farm all guys are rolling your eyes and probably even cussing under your breath right now, but just hear me out on this. This is why I'm going with the 8N. So you should probably do a little history, a little background on what the Ford 8N is. So what is the Ford 8N? Well, it was a tractor manufactured by Ford from 1947 to 1952. Within that time frame, there was 524,000 8N tractors manufactured. That is a boatload of tractors for that small of, uh, of window of time there. And it's interesting, the original price in 1952 was $1,404. I guess Henry Ford needed that extra $4. Actually, I think Henry Ford was dead by then, so he really didn't need the money anyway. So the 8N is a really basic tractor. Um, yeah, obviously it was cutting edge back in the late 40s and 50s, but looking at it now, it's a very basic tractor. You know, what are you getting with that? Well, you're getting a four cylinder engine, it's a gasoline engine, not a diesel. You're getting a class one three-point hitch, standard PTO, and a standard transmission with four forward gears and one reverse, unless your 8N happens to have the Sherman conversion transmission, which would give you 12 forward gears and three reverse. It's kind of like a, a multi-speed rear end. You see that on a lot of tractors now. So what are some of the potential issues with an old 8N? Well, just that, it's old. You're looking at a 60 to 70 year old tractor pretty much, and there's a lot of issues that can come with an old tractor. Those tractors, unless they were converted, would still be running a six volt system, which is kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. One other issue is there is no safety equipment. Hey, the greatest generation, they didn't need no stinking seat belts or ROPs. We get out there, we plow the field, if it flips over and we die, then we get over it. So not, not a lot of safety options when it came to the 8N. The 8N had a single stage clutch, which if you don't know, know what that means, it just basically means if you're running the PTO and you've got something behind you like a mower that's, that's spinning, when you push in that clutch and want to stop, then that thing's going to keep pushing you. Kind of a drag in these West Virginia hills when you're coming to the edge of the mountain and you want to stop and uh, the tractor won't let you. 
There's obviously aftermarket attachments you can put on that to keep that from happening, of course, but that's a whole nother video. Well, the 8N is obviously a two-wheel drive tractor. Um, almost all your tractors today are four-wheel drive, brand new ones. And where we live here in West Virginia, four-wheel drive is a necessity, if not a must. Uh, so a two-wheel drive tractor around here, yee, it's doable. And of course, the 8N did not come with a front bucket. There, there is no bucket attachment on the 8N, which from my perspective, a tractor without a bucket is barely a tractor. Now again, there's a lot of guys that have tractors and do a lot of things with them without a bucket, but man, a bucket is so handy to have on a tractor. You can actually see some conversions people have done where they've put buckets on eight ends, but those are extremely modified. Okay, so why am I suggesting such an old tractor? Well, the thing about the eight end is they really are bulletproof. Uh, the fact that there was uh, 524,000 of them manufactured, you could probably still find most of those tractors around. Some of them are still running. Some are probably rusted down in somebody's farm meadow, but a lot of those tractors are still running around unless they end up as parts on the wall of Cracker Barrel or something. I don't know. I hate it when people do that. These tractors were very reliable. There wasn't a lot of things to go wrong with them. It was a very simple process. You know, internal combustion engine, running a transmission with four sets of wheels, a steering wheel, and a seat. <laughs> Not a lot you could break in that situation. With the eight ends, Parts are still everywhere, and it's not that you're buying old parts. There's all kinds of aftermarket parts, uh, remanufactured parts, new parts for an old tractor like that. So parts are not an issue. Um, instructions on how to repair one, everywhere. Forums, uh, downloadable uh, instruction manuals, all that stuff is out there. You can also find a lot of guys that have taken the 8N and restored them. They've done the 12-volt the conversion, they've, uh, they've restored the body, they've done an engine overhaul, they've added all kinds of neat fun bells and whistles. And it doesn't really run the price out crazy, uh, but you could get a nice rebuilt 8N you know, for a third of the price that you would get for a new small subcompact tractor. You know, another great thing about it is they really are inexpensive. And that's kind of the crux of our conversation here. When you go, just go anywhere, Google, get on Facebook, get on any type of trader magazine or online ad bulletin, Craigslist, whatever, and look for 8N tractors. And you'd be amazed what you can find. I just did a quick search uh, in, in preparation for this video, did a quick search just on Facebook Marketplace around where I am here in central West Virginia. And I think I found 10 8Ns within a uh, 20 minute drive, one of them was for a thousand dollars. And it, the guy claimed that it still ran, that the engine would turn over. Now, every panel on it was a different color and it looked like a herd of goats, but if it still runs for a thousand bucks, that's a great way to start with a tractor. With the 8N, even though it's a really old tractor, three point hitch is still the same. It's still a class one three point hitch. So anything that goes on my tractor, a 2002, onto a brand new tractor, it's all gonna work. Now, when it comes to PTO driven or things that need wet lines, of course, you know, there's some, some things there, the PTO speeds, but your, your standard three-point hitch attachments are gonna fit fine on that 8N. So if you're gonna plow, if you're gonna use a box scraper, if you're gonna run a brush hog, you've got the ability to do that with no problem with this 8N. As I mentioned, there's a lot of aftermarket stuff for the 8N. You can get conversions. The the 12 volt conversion is one. You know, I've I've seen actually where you can buy ROPS for the 8N, so you can actually convert um, an 8N to to having rollover protection, seat belt, all that type of stuff. Um, all, all kinds of things. There's tons of aftermarket um, opportunities for the 8N because they've been around so long and they're still being used. And one thing I think would be great if this is an entry level tractor for you. So if you get one for a couple grand or, or whatever the case may be, you could run the, the wheels off that thing for a couple years. Maybe you do some additional upgrades. Maybe you, you just do general maintenance. You could probably turn around and sell that thing for the same amount of money you got it for because they hold their value. Again, a 70 year old implement, it, it's kind of hit the bottom already. So as long as you didn't blow a hole in the side of the engine, you could probably turn around and get your money back and use that to put toward a new tractor. So if you're going to look for an 8N, you're going to take the plunge and try to get an 8N tractor as your first tractor, here's what I'd recommend. I would start with, again, all the online opportunities you have. You know, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, there's, there's uh, national tractor sales sites, um, obviously your local used tractor dealer probably has an 8N laying around somewhere. So I'd do some looking there and just see what you've got. 
if you're mechanically inclined, if you don't mind turning a wrench and you don't mind working on stuff, even better. Because you can find, like that $1,000 tractor I was telling you about, you could find that, that guy, buy that tractor, and, and be able to do whatever work you need to do there and, and not have a lot of money tied up in it. Once you've identified the tractor you want to check out and maybe you're thinking about buying, there are some things you need to look out for just to make sure you're not getting hosed here. And not that somebody's trying to cheat you, it's just you may end up taking on more work than you want to. If you look at, if you go look at this 8N, you want to make sure it turns over. And don't fall for the, oh yeah, when I parked it two years ago it ran, but I haven't tried it now, but it should be fine. You want to verify that that engine will indeed turn over. If a guy says, well, the battery's dead, it doesn't have a battery, then you need to bring one to take care of that yourself because you want to see if that engine's going to crank. If it's not seized up, then you're in good shape. You know, obviously a visual inspection is important too. Just make sure there aren't any gaping holes in anything. Um, body panel holes, um, fender issues, seat issues, steering wheel issues, all those things really aren't that expensive to fix. Um, so I wouldn't been, get bent out of shape if the hood or the fenders were beat all to pieces or they had you know, holes of rust that you could stick your fist through. That would actually be some of the cheaper issues to fix. Mechanical soundness is what I would be looking for. If you can get the tractor to start, again, check to see if it smokes a lot, if it's rolling a lot of smoke, then okay, engine's still turning over, but you're going to have some issues there, probably going to need a rebuild. Uh, not nearly as big of an issue if the engine's completely seized, but it could still be more money than you want to invest there. And of course, the other big thing is look at the tires. Most likely, a 70-year-old tractor is not going to have the original tires on it. At some point, somebody's probably put a new set of tires on it. If they're completely dry rot and they got holes in them and they're gutted, then you may say, well, I'm not necessarily going to buy that unless you're getting a crazy deal on it because there's a lot of money you can tie up in four tires for an 8-in, especially those back tires. You know, those things are not cheap. Now, if you find one that's already had the 12-volt conversion, even better because that that takes a little hassle out of that. 12 volts much easier to deal with and, and uh, work on batteries, all that type of stuff. Just makes life easier. So give it a shot. Just, just look around. It'd be curious to see. Comment below. Just do a search um, real quick. You know, open up uh, Facebook or open up Craigslist, your local Craigslist, and just do a search on 4 to 8N and just see what you're seeing. And maybe comment below. You'd say, hey, I found one for $1,000. I found one for $4,000. I've seen them across the board. I've seen them as expensive as ten grand. but somebody has turned this 8N into a Cadillac. I mean, just all dressed out, you know, new tires, new everything, new paint job, total engine rebuild, real sexy looking 8N for ten grand. And again, you've, the other end of the spectrum was the $1,000 standing out in the meadow herd of goats looking tractor. So there's all kinds of variety you get there. So I'd be curious to see what you guys find. Well, before I wrap this video up, I do have a request, and it's tied to a lot of the feedback I'm getting from you all and I thought let's try this and see if there's any benefit in it. So many of you have channels uh, or starting channels about your homestead on YouTube and I think that's great. With YouTube platform there's no such thing as competition really. If you want to have a little bit of attention brought to your channel I want to create a directory on my website redtoolhouse.com where people can come and see a list of YouTube channels pertaining to homesteading. So if you have a channel, it's homestead related, go to our website redtoolhouse.com forward slash contact us or you can just go to redtoolhouse.com, click on the contact link at the top and you'll see our, our little contact form there. Just put your name, your information in there, but in the uh, message panel there, in the message box, put the link to your YouTube channel and give me about, uh, let's say, 100 words or less description about your channel. Kind of the who, what, why, when and where of your channel. And I will build a page on the website that's, that'll be a directory. We'll put it in alpha order or, or whatever we do, and we'll have the ability to expand on your little uh, description there. So the game plan will be just to encourage people, hey, if you're looking for other channels about homesteading, here's a nice list of them. If you've got a website or anything like that, uh, social media, Facebook, or whatever, you can include that too, and we'll do some other links there. So check that out. Send that, and we'll start building that directory of, uh, of YouTube channels. And hopefully people can benefit from that, and, and maybe we all get a little more traction out of that. Well, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe. And, and continue to send questions. I love doing videos answering questions. That makes the topic a lot easier for me. Instead of me figuring out, what am I going to do a video today on? Check us out on redtoolhouse.com. Take care, everybody.